Hi, I'm Fox Sellers, and today I'm going to be talking about the MCU and the MCU films and ranking them from worst to best. Notice you've copied my bid. But before I do, please click on the subscribe button, get chimed into other Foxy Seller videos, as well as like if you're interested in these type of things. The algorithm will feed you more videos like this one. And by subscribing to me, you'll get chimed in on videos just like this. Thanks. My background interest in this has a lot to do with the source material. Grew up as a kid loving the comic books, so I've always been very enthusiastic about a lot of the movies as they come out. Now, they change things. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. I will touch on that a little bit just because of my enthusiasm for the source material. So be, be prepared. Stay tuned for the end of this video where I'm going to break down the Marvel Universe, the 33 movies, and break them into the top third, the middle third, and the bottom third. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at how many of phase one, how many phase two, how many of phase five showed up in each of those thirds. Just to see how it falls. It's going to be different for everybody, but I'm going to show you how it fell in for me. So I'm only including the 33 movies that are considered MCU canon. Now I get that there's a whole bunch from previous studios or whatnot that are going to get retconned as canon because of what's rumored to be in Deadpool 3 or the Multiverse of Madness or even what showed up in the end credit scene of uh, the Marvels. However... I'm only including what's currently canon. Sure, all that'll all that'll be thrown into the mix later. Just these 33. Here we go. Number 33 is Iron Man 3. I think it's the worst of all the films. I've got lots of problems with it. Biggest being that the Mandarin, one of the most important characters in comics, is completely minimized. So, uh, I'm going to spend very little time on this one because there's just so much I don't like about it. So Iron Man 3 is number 33 on the list. Number 32 is Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. It's terrible. It's terrible. I don't know what to say. You know, it, it, on paper, it looked like a good idea. There was potential. Kang is a great character. He's probably one of the only newly introduced characters in this well i guess he was in loki but newer introduced characters that worked the rest just n nothing about it works the special effects are terrible i don't know i don't know what they i don't know how they did this but it's a complete and utter bomb um and it's one of the it's one of the three that i'm calling downright terrible Final of that list would be number 31, Thor, Love and Thunder. Sure, yeah, it has a couple of the fun jokes and it's got Thor in it and Thor's great and some of the surrounding characters are okay. But this movie just laid an egg. Really don't like it. it, it, it it's, it's terrible on a second watch. Yeah, I tried to give it another chance. It's just not having it. Okay, now number 30 is Thor, Dark World, this is where we start to get into, okay, all of these are enjoyable, entertaining movies. I like them. Thor just happens to be the last of all of those. So number 30, Thor, Dark World. Number 29, The Incredible Hulk. Sure, it's really low on the list here, but I still enjoy The Incredible Hulk. Uh, the Incredible Hulk is my probably my second favorite Marvel character. Favorite. Second favorite comic book character so i i have a lot of enthusiasm for it but uh you know it, it could have been better but it's it's basic you know there's there's not a lot of complaints i have about it it just happens to fall down near the bottom of the list number 28 is shang chi legend of the ten rings uh, st totally enjoyed it uh entertained throughout the whole movie it redeemed the whole Iron Man 3 debacle of the Mandarin, um, but still at the same time too, second watch, third watch, eh, it's less entertaining, um, but still great. So number 27, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I, I wish this was higher on the list um, because I feel like there's so much potential in this movie. I love Namor in it he's great he's a great villain he's got the potential to be a you know semi slash hero villain in the future 
But this movie is missing the Black Panther, and I feel like that's the only thing that hurt this. This would have been better than the original Black Panther for me, but it's just missing that component. But otherwise, it's a great movie. I do like this movie. It's just, you know, it it could have been a lot better. Number 26, The Black Panther. Great movie. I really think it's overrated in the sense that it was nominated for Best Picture. Really? Of, Of all the MCUs, that's the one that got nominated I don't quite understand that, but I still think it's a great movie and still deserves a lot of praise. It's great. It's the one thing missing from the second Black Panther movie was the Black Panther being in it. He's the best part of it. So a uh, number 25, Black Widow. Great movie. Had you taken all of the Black Widow Marvel characterness out of that and this just been like an espionage type movie, would have been awesome. Just not one of the top tier MCU movies. Number 24 is Captain Marvel. This movie was higher up on my list previously. Um, It's moved down a little bit because, in my opinion, and frankly, I found it very entertaining, but frankly, in later viewings, it drags, it it hurts. It's hurt by pacing. It's got poor pacing. Um, I do like the character. Some of the, the changes that they made to the character, I don't love, but they don't hurt it. You know, it's, it's fine. Marvel. The original Captain Marvel from the comics is my favorite. However, I grew up on Monica Rambeau. So the Captain Marvel that they chose for this movie isn't even in my top two or three. When I was reading comics, Carol Danvers was dead. She had been killed by Rogue. Rogue absorbed all of her powers. And so there was no Carol Danvers when I was reading comics as a kid. It was Monica Rambeau. And then Captain Marvel, the Marvel had originally died. So there was a lot of things they could have done differently. But I, I had a lot of enjoyment. And I did like Carol Danvers. It was a character I wasn't that familiar with. So, you know, I enjoyed it. I do look forward to the possibility, though, of Carol Danvers possibly dying. By way of Rogue, when Rogue is introduced into the MCU. So that would be interesting. I do like that. Because I think she's built up enough as a character where if you kill her, um, it'd be devastating it, to a certain extent. She's not like an Iron Man level, but she, uh, she you know, it, she, it would be impactful enough if she was killed. So I, I recommend that. Number 23 is The Eternals. The Eternals was one where I, di- I did really like The Eternals. Um, the problem with it is that these are all characters, even from the point of view of a comic book reader, none of those are characters that anybody cared about in the comics. The Eternals was not well received as a comic book. Some of the characters that are in this movie show up as ancillary characters in other comic books. Uh, Cersei, for example, she's a, she's an Avenger. She's an important Avenger for a period of time. But other than that, they're not that really interesting. However, I do feel that this movie is underrated in the sense that it was a little more sophisticated. Um, it was a bit more worldly. And the characters were had less pizzazz than your flashy Marvel characters that you've seen in the past. So I get why the audiences didn't love it as much. But I found it to be you know smarter than some of the other ones. And I did enjoy it. And, it, and I find it enjoyable on second and third watches as well, too. So... If you're one of those people that didn't like it but only saw it once, give it another try. It's it's good. It's 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 a, it's a longer, slower movie, but it's um it's a bit more sophisticated in my eyes. Number twenty two is Iron Man two. Iron Man two. I I always enjoyed Iron Man two. There's a lot of fun in it. It is more of an Iron Man story than the first one, and then especially the third one. So. It does have elements of, if you're a fan of the comics, because certainly Whiplash is a major character. I thought they did him well. Justin Hammer is so important in the comics. And I absolutely love Sam Rockwell. He kills that character. So I do enjoy it. It just, it has kind of a a weak ending. Um, But we're now getting into a whole slab of Marvel MCU movies that are all solid, good, entertaining, and it's It becomes difficult in the middle here to kind of order these, but I'm going to do my best. Number 21 is The Marvels, which was the movie that was just released weeks ago, was not well received. I found it highly entertaining. Um, I've only seen it once, so it's it's difficult for me to say that it's 21 on this list. Maybe in second watchings it won't be. It's got some silly things in it that didn't bother me at all. it, it, It becomes a bit of a musical at times, and... 
there is the the ending with and I don't want to give anything away but it, there's a ridiculous concept in the end I enjoyed it. I was laughing during that whole time. And I love these characters, by the way. So uh, Miss Marvel, she's fantastic. I love her. I loved that show. I think the three of them worked together very well. My biggest problem with it was the gender swapping of the villain. The villain probably needed to be a bit more menacing. On paper, the character's great. Uh, However, the casting of her, the girl, she's just nice, pretty, you, you like her. Like that's not a villain. It just it just didn't work um, for that. So I think that's the biggest thing that hurts is the villain. But other than that, I enjoyed everything. And it was a nice tight movie. It was quick. So um, you get in, you get out, you, you have your laughs, you have your fun. It's good. Number 20 is Captain America, the first Avenger. Now this is in phase one. So they're, you know, they're, they don't have their feet running as of yet. But this is a very solid origin story it covers a lot of great things about captain america and it it focuses a hundred percent on him so you get that and red skull is an unbelievable villain from the comics especially but in this they they nailed him and it it really worked well number 19 is guardians of the galaxy volume three great i i I loved it i i enjoyed the movie um i'm a i'm a fan of the high evolutionary from the comics i don't think they did him as well as they could have but he's not terrible in it by any means he he's a pretty decent villain in it but in the comics he's much more intimidating um so it's missing that a little bit um the three guardians of the galaxy movies are all really good and they're all you know i don't want to say close together but two and three are close together so you know, it, it was it was difficult to go, uh, you know, this one's the worst. But, yeah, you know, it was the worst. Number 18 is Ant-Man. The first Ant-Man. Laughed my ass off through this whole movie. I enjoy it. Uh, Paul Rudd is one of the best things for this movie. I know I understand he helped write it. Um, I was never really a big fan of Ant-Man in the comics in the sense that during my childhood when I was reading the comics, he wasn't Ant-Man. He was Hank Pym. He was kind of like the Reed Richards for the Avengers and he was just doing all these things and he had they you know what they did they did nail um, Michael Douglas's character of Hank Pym where he's kind of a nasty little bitch at times and in the comics he does get in these arguments with people he doesn't get along with Iron Man it was very disappointing that they never really had that interaction between Tony Stark and Hank Pym because in the comics they do they do fight and argue a lot and it's part of the dynamic of the Avengers. And we never got to see that, unfortunately. But um, Ant-Man's great. I, I, I love the way they did it. And, and I never would have thought to have Scott Lang as the Ant-Man. My, you know, my approach would have been like, oh, I'm going to do Hank Pym. I'm going to do it right from the beginning. And they, they kind of did that and then also did this too. So I wasn't familiar with, with Scott Lang. And I like him. He's a great character. So that, that was a good change. Number 17 is Doctor Strange. Love it. It's great. Doctor Strange is not a comic book I read as a kid, but Doctor Strange always shows up in so many of the other books, like the Avengers. He'll, you know, he's important there. He's in, he's important in the Infinity Gauntlet. He's important in, in Secret Wars. So all these times he shows up. So I'm familiar with him being an ancillary character. It was interesting to see his origin, and I thought they did it really well. They haven't really delved into all the Doctor Strangeness of things in this first movie, but it's still a solid movie. Number 16 is Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, This one has a lot of really great old school villain scenario scenes with with Mysterio that I loved. It was great. Um, Felt like a a, a solid Spider-Man movie. Um, Just, you know, as you've seen, you haven't seen any of the other Spider-Mans on my list yet. So you can see this is my least favorite of them, but it's still a solid movie at number 16. Number 15 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is similar to Ant-Man, has all of the jokes and and, and the entertaining and the, and the fun and the thrills. Um, however, this one is a bit smarter and it has a, has a little bit more to it. It also, it also gave you some clues as to characters that were possibly going to show up. Like the, the person that was funding um, this, this heist originally, I, I wondered what happened to that person because that's possibly the person that bought the, you know, the Stark Tower or, or you know is involved in some sort of scheme and they haven't they haven't gone anywhere with that so it was unfortunate we haven't seen that but ghost 
The villain ghost, and this one was gender swapped, by the way, had no problem with it because there's not this this firm understanding. I mean, the ghost is not a household name. However, in the comics, ghost is an Iron Man villain. And I've always remembered the first appearance of ghost. I bought it off the newsstand when I was a kid and I always loved this character. He was he was a big foe to Iron Man and fought with him and used a lot of his tech, too. They upgraded the concept of the character for this movie. They gave it reason for why it was what it was and how she was kind of, you know, phasing in and out and made it more interesting. So it was an improvement on the character they have, even though I loved the character the way it was. Number 14 is Thor. The original Thor, it's unique. It's it's one of the ones where, you know, I think they had they had made Iron Man, they had done Captain America, and they had done Hulk. So this was the fourth of them. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the no, in the comments. Whosoever holds this hammer, if it be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Th this was so new unique the way they did it and they and they they had their feet in two different worlds. They they introduce you to the world of the gods and they nailed it. It, it was a daring daring effort to try to do that. And they touched on so many things and, and they really were close to a lot of what happened in the comic. I, I feel like they improved on Hemdell, but um, Loki, they made him so much so much more interesting. I mean, he's pretty cool in the comics too, but I mean, they made him very interesting in this. And having Thor fit in the way he fit in to Earth really made that movie what it was. I love the way that worked out. And they did a little Easter egg for the Donald Blake character because they had it on his on his name because I guess uh, Natalie Portman's character dated him before or something like that. But he he becomes Donald Blake. That's his his human persona in the comic books, which is kind of dumb. And it's it works great that they jettisoned that. Number thirteen is Captain America: Civil War. This is just a potpourri of everything awesome in Marvel. All of these characters coming together and then smash. It, it, it was as exciting as when Avengers first came out because you had a lot of characters going against each other. I'm not that familiar with the later Civil War books. They found a way to make this work within the universe they already created and have all these characters come together and fight each other. And it, it's a lot of fun. Number 12 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Totally entertaining movie. Love it. Uh, I, I try to match it up against the first one. And there was a time, I remember when, when Volume 2 came out, I liked that one better than 1. And then as time went by, I think slowly 1 moved back up to the top of the slate. But this is a lot of fun. I mean, Mantis isn't introduced until this movie, so having her in the cast is fantastic. She's much more interesting than she is in the comics. In the comics, she's primarily a bad guy matched up with, I, I believe she marries the Swordsman, who's a character we've been introduced to in Hawkeye. I don't see those two worlds colliding at all, which is unfortunate because those two were, you know, a, a husband and wife couple of crime, if you will. Um, but both of which were Avengers at some point. So uh, Mantis, to me, has mostly always been an Avenger. Man, did they improve her. She's just so great in it. Ego, who's probably out of all the villains that we've seen so far in the comics, he's the biggest level villain they've fought, I, I believe. I could be missing somebody. Um, comment below if you, if you can think of somebody that's a bigger villain than Ego has been. Ego could probably take down Galactus in a lot of situations. So, And we haven't seen Galactus yet. So that's how big he is. And... He's kind of, I don't know, he's just a tough character to do. I don't i don't want to say they didn't nail it, but I don't know if they did. Okay, so now we're in the top third of all MCU movies. These are the, the elite of the elite. Number 11, Spider-Man Homecoming. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This is one of those ones where it captured the essence of Peter Parker you got to remember in the comics, the first, I don't know, 90 to 100 books in the, in the 60s, he's in high school or he's just about to go into college. So he's really young. He's dealing with typical things. And this really captured that Ferris Bueller essence to it. You know, cause it's got that scene in it, of course. But it's got that uh, John Hughes feel to it, uh, which is really a teenage coming of age type of story. 
they covered that here. It's great. And then they touched on Vulture, who I never really liked Vulture in the comics. He's not that impressive. They made him great. They really did make him great in this. And I love Michael Keaton's version of the Vulture. Number 10, the Avengers. This is the culmination of all of their original seeds that they placed after, I think, four movies and then the Avengers. So, you know, it it, it panned out. It, it, It came out great. I love the Avengers. It's one of those ones, yeah, anytime you watch it, I mean... The, the Hulk in it's great. It's, I must feel like it's the, it's the Hulk movie that I had always wanted that, that it's touched on. So I, I do like I do like the Avengers and, and the way they came together. Number nine is Spider-Man No Way Home. So this is the top of the three Spider-Mans so far. This one just is, I'm like, if you're a Spider-Man fan from any type of medium, this is really exciting because they've got... Doc Ock, they've got the Green Goblin, they've got the Lizard, they've got Sandman, they've got Electro. Like it's just a mosh posh of all of, and all of them are great villains. Like I love all those villains. So this was really exciting and fun. Hello, Peter. Hi. Do we? Do I know you? What have you done with my machine? And it started to kind of touch a little bit on that multiverse that they're building for Phase Four, Phase Five, Phase Six. So um, it's exciting, and they, and they didn't divulge too much. You don't know what's coming up. And they changed the trajectory of the entire trilogy by making everybody not remember that he's Peter Parker. So it's very exciting. I know people like MJ, and they like Ned. I'd love to see some of the other characters from those comics show up in the next trilogy. And then maybe he sees them again, and you know something else is rekindled there. But... You know, there's Gwen Stacy, there's there's Betty Brant, there's so many, the Felicia Harding, there's so many great characters that he could have some sort of relationship with, even as friends, like, you know, Robbie Robertson and, and his relationship at the Daily Bugle and all that. I mean, there's just so many places they could go with this. So, um, sky's the limit. Number eight is Avengers Age of Ultron. This could be a bit more controversial for some. Its reception is divisive. Um, some people didn't like it. Some people did. For me, it is a comic book wet dream as far as there's just so much fun. They introduce Vision. I love Vision. Vision was so great in the comics. They kind of nailed him. Like he's that. That's how I envisioned Vision. And so they they did a good job. He he's he's a character, and I and I always want more Vision. So like any of these movies where he's not in him or. Or, you know, they, he's dead or they have the white vision. I'm like, I want vision back because I do love vision so much. They introduced Scarlet Witch. They introduced Quicksilver. So great. The battle between Iron Man and Hulk is the best fight in all the MCU, I think, so far. I could be forgetting about something, but I love that fight. It's so cool. And it's so like, there's so many times where like, I you know, because I, I read Iron Man and I read the Hulk separately and anytime they crossed over and one was in the the other and the other was in the one like i just loved it i loved anytime those two were together great battles love it number seven is thor ragnarok they had some limitations in this movie of what they could do because the source material that they were using had the silver surfer was the main character in this hulk series of comic books where he goes to Sakaar and, and he has to do this battle. Thor isn't the character that he fights in this. It, it's Silver Surfer. And then Korg, I, I, I always felt Korg was better in the comics than in this. I thought he was a little corny and, and uh, just a little too goofy. Um, in the comics, he's a little more domina- domineering. He, he, you're a little more afraid of him. Um, he, he's almost like a, a composed thing, if you will. But all of the other parts to it, I love it. I mean, the, they have the, the little bit of Doctor Strange that's in it. And then, then when they go to Sakaar, you meet all these other characters. It's great. Hela is one of the most important villains in the Thor comics that they hadn't introduced yet. So it, it was a lot of fun to see her in all her glory because she's pretty, she's pretty devastating as a villain in this. Number six is another decisive one. It's Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. I, I be, this was the Doctor Strange I was waiting for. I, I had so much fun in this. And this is one where I've gone back and watched it again and again. And I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a huge Sam Raimi fan, but 
he brought Sam Raimi. Like he he he. No one does Sam Raimi better than Sam Raimi, and he nailed it in this. And I love what he brought to that franchise. He's he's actually kind of perfect for it. So we should tell him the truth. All of the fun they had going around and and introducing that other uh, universe, which showed you Mister Fantastic and Charles Xavier and Black Bolt and and all of them. It's it, it it was really cool. Um, and this is one where I've gone back and watched this movie. I don't know how many times it gets better and better every time. So I, I prefer this Dr. Strange over the first one. And as far as an ensemble piece, that has got so many Marvel characters in it. This one's way up on my list. Number five is captain America winter soldier. This one is a perfect movie. It really is a perfect, perfect movie. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? It encapsulates everything that you know about Captain America that's not too far off in, in, the, in the wild Avengers realm. It's, it's more grounded in espionage um, and the government and all that. And, and I love it. And, and, and the way that, you know, I wasn't familiar with the Winter Soldier because I had stopped reading comics by that time when the, he was introduced in like 2008, somewhere like, or 2006. I don't, I don't remember when he was introduced. Anyway, he was a really interesting character because he has so much backstory with Bucky. And I have a lot of the Bucky appearances, and, you know, whether that be in the early Captain America books or the Avengers books. And I always liked Bucky, so it was great to see him at his current incarnation, I should say. Oh, and by the way, Zola, uh, that, that's a villain in the comics that, eh, whatever, you know, it's, he's, he's nothing special. But man, did they weed him in so beautifully. I mean, they made him so kind of spooky because he's almost like a ghost at this point. Like, he's not really a real thing anymore, but he's still like his essence is still there. And and he is a quintessential Captain America villain, and they found a way to work him in that worked beautifully. Number four is the one that started it all, and that's Iron Man. Iron Man, as a kid, was probably my favorite comic book. I was reading that. I remember getting Iron Man number one, and it was a pinnacle moment in my comic book collecting career as a little kid. And the character was always super, super important to me. So when they came out with Iron Man... The expectations were, you know, they could do anything and I'm going to love it. And fortunately, they did everything right. Um, it's it's very grounded. It it introduces you to the Marvel Universe, but in a, in a um, more of a benign way that's not going to harm any, anything down the, down the road. And then they throw in Nick Fury at the end. So um, it's... It's up there with Captain America Winter Soldier where it's it's close to a perfect movie. I don't know. I mean, it could be. Um, I just enjoy it so much better because it's got Iron Man and, and, and Iron Man in all his glory. Number three is Guardians of the Galaxy. This was a movie I remember when it came out. I couldn't have cared more. It honestly was... I, I mean, I bought... Guardians of the Galaxy number one when I was a kid, not the, not the original series, but the the later series, and then read it once and was like, I don't care, I don't, I just didn't care about any of those characters. Uh, they weren't major tentpole characters in the Marvel universe. So when it came out and was as fun and as clever and as exciting and thrilling as it was, boy was that a great surprise. And I didn't I didn't see this one in the theater. I I, I bought the DVD when it came out. And man, was it fun. Uh, and, and it's one that's just gotten better and better with age. I, I do love this. And it also, this was the first, and I, I don't feel like we're there yet, but this was the first of the space perspective of the Marvel Universe. There's so much great outer space, celestial type characters and stories that are in the Marvel Universe that they have not gone to, whether that be the Star Jammers or the Silver Surfer or the Fantastic Four's relationship with everything in the universe. Even X-Men. X-Men, by the way, I, for those of you that have seen the movies, the comics really go further into outer space and have like the Shri Empire and all those characters. So Captain Marvel could go there. If they're going to make Captain Marvel 3, I'd love to see some of those characters interact with whether it be the Kree and the Skrull Wars that have gone on. All of that is 
a, a realm of the Marvel universe. I'm looking forward to seeing more and more of. This is the the very seed to this. This is the beginning of it in Guardians of the Galaxy. They they didn't taint it or or, or there's no blemishes in it so far at this point yet. So Guardians of the Galaxy is number three. Now we're into our top two. If you've been keeping track, you probably know what they are. Um, they're kind of grouped together. Number two is Avengers Endgame. Boy, is this awesome. This is just such an awesome movie. It does some things that they, they took liberties in the writing by having the time heist. And that was, that was a lot of fun. The Russo brothers really know what they're doing. And, and, and they, take, they take the fundamentals of these characters and these stories and they go, well, how would we do it? And, and let's do it that way. And, and we're, let's have a lot of fun with it. And that's what Endgame is. And Endgame is a home run of an exercise in developing someone else's characters and stories. And they did it so well. And I, man, and, and Endgame, you know, Endgame kind of ruined Marvel for phase four and five because people have this expectation that it's like, well, where's the Endgame style stuff? Like that was, that was the culmination of three phases. So we got to wait until the end of phase six. I, I don't think that they're going to be able to do something as grand as, as Endgame. They say they're going to with Secret Wars, but we'll have to see. But man, is that a ballsy movie. I love it. And number one, my favorite MCU movie is Avengers Infinity War. This movie is, I mean, I, I read Infinity Gauntlet as a kid. I don't know how many times I love it. One of the big disadvantages for this movie is they can't use the Silver Surfer because the Silver Surfer is the main character in the Infinity Gauntlet. So they can't really use him. They don't have the rights to him yet. So when when, when Hulk comes down and crashes through Doctor Strange's house and lands in there and he's like, Thanos is coming. Thanos is coming. He's coming. That scene is the iconic scene in the comics, but with the Silver Surfer and the Silver Surfer lands there and he's like, Thanos is coming. And there's this whole storyline that leads up to it where Silver Surfer and Thanos have had this relationship and Silver Surfer is watching him get each one of these stones and he doesn't want them to get each one, but when he gets the final, Thanos is just toying with him and then just throws him. So in this, they have to jettison that a little bit, and of course, but they did such a great job. There's so many fun stuff that's in Infinity War and and I love it. And, and then... They do this thing that they did in the first Avengers where they're bringing characters together that haven't met yet. So Iron Man meeting Doctor Strange was just fantastic. Spider-Man meeting everybody else was just great. I loved it. The Guardians of the Galaxy being introduced to the Avengers it was a lot of fun. And this movie, even though it's an Avengers movie, is really a Thanos movie. So he's the star of the movie. He's the one that wins the movie. This is the one where I, I guess I relate to the Greek tragedy where, you know, all hell breaks loose and it doesn't get any better. And it ends with half of the universe snapped out of existence. So um, maybe that's why this one goes above Endgame because Endgame has the happy ending. They're both really, really close, but this one's my favorite and, and it's more Thanos than anything. And Thanos is, is one of my favorite villains in all the comics, so. There you have it. <laughs> All right. As I had mentioned before, I was going to break down the three thirds of the entire Marvel Universe. I'll start with the bottom third. And the bottom third had one from phase one, two from phase two, two from phase three, five from phase four, and one from phase five. Phase five is difficult to include in this because we've only got three of them. So... But anyway, it looks like phase four is the big winner in the bottom third. Not so good. Okay, so now let's go into the middle third. The middle third, we have three of them from phase one, one of them from phase two, five of them from phase three. That's a tongue twister. Zero of them from phase four. So phase four... Whether you liked it or didn't like it, it's got none in the middle for me. It's either you know top or bottom. Phase five has two of them. So as much as people think they're off to a bad start with phase five, two of them are middling and one of them laid an egg. And then in the top third of all MCUs, two of them are phase one, three of them are phase two, 
four of them are phase three, two of them are phase four, and zero of them are phase five. So the big winner of the bottom three is phase four. The, the winner of the middle third is phase three. And the winner of the top third is phase three also. And that's my ranking of the Marvel Universe. I'm Foxy Sellers. I want to thank you for watching. Please go ahead, click on the subscribe, get chimed into another one of my videos next time I do this. And also click like, that way you'll get fed videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.